Hello everyone, hopefully you can all hear me all right. Welcome to our virtual dig tour live from Sultan Hall. My name is Ginny and I'm a community archaeologist with Dig Ventures. When I'm not out in the field, it's my job to run online events like this uh, to introduce everyone who loves archaeology with an opportunity to do it online. Uh, I'm joined today by my colleague Freddie, who's live in the field, so we'll be meeting him a bit later uh, to give you a little tour around our ongoing dig. Before we get started, I just wanted to throw out a quick thank you to crowdfunders. I'm sure there's a few of you in the chat already, but thank you so much to everyone who has funded this dig and made this whole thing possible. Um, we've got some really exciting stuff to go through for you today. It's really incredible. Um, so thank you so much for making that possible. But before we get going, I'm quickly going to run through a little bit of housekeeping and some order of events, what we're going to get up to today just before we get into the juicy stuff. So please be patient with us, particularly today we are uh, tuning in live from site, we're relying on 4G, which can sometimes be a little bit touch and go, um, but hopefully it should all be fine. We did test the signal this morning and it all seemed good, but if anything does go wrong, just give us a couple of minutes to get to the bottom of that and we'll get going again as soon as possible. So our next slide very short uh, series of events today. So coming up, I'll wrap up my quick introduction and take us through the story of our dig at Sultan Hall. Like I said, it's a really great one and I'm really excited to share it with all of you. And then we're going to go into the main event, that virtual tour of the dig. We're going to see what everyone's up to today, what they're digging, where they are, what we have found. We're going to see all of it live from site through Freddie. And then last but not least, we're going to leave a little bit of space at the end for a Q&A. So like I said, if you have any questions, do feel free to drop that in the Q&A feature below. So without further ado, let's crack on with the story of Sultan Hall. I think one thing that's really important in archaeology is a narrative, and this site has an incredible story to tell. The key to this site is, of course, the mound that you can see on the screen there. That's what drew us in initially. But what did we know about the mound before we arrived? We knew it was an iconic local site and a scheduled ancient monument, but how old was it? What was it? We had no evidence for that. And what do archaeologists do best when there's no evidence? We make it our mission to go out there and find some. So we did. And after a few years of excavation, now we're confident that we can tell you the whole story of this mysterious monument. We know the date. It sits really nicely in the 13th century, right in that medieval period. And we found numerous artifacts, evidence for a moat, a bridge, possible structures, all of which has inspired, I think, our biggest debate on this site, is this a castle or not? So like I said, you can see the mound on the screen there and you can see Sultan Hall just in the back in between those trees there. And if we go through, I have a few of our finds for you, which helped us identify that sort of medieval chronology. So you can see there we have a pilgrim's badge, we have an ampular, we even have a leather shoe there. We have some really good uh, waterlogged, well-preserved finds that have come out of the moat. Of course, we have pottery, which is, I think, a classic for any medieval site. And you can see in the top middle there, we actually have some preserved wood as well. So this is how we found that moat bridge um, and other sort of wooden structures on site. It's really, really incredible. Some lovely evidence there. Um, but like I said, uh, we have that debate, is it a castle or not? And I think for a long time, our opinion has swayed for and against for various different reasons, namely the lack of sort of concrete evidence of any sort of structure or what the structure is on the mound itself. But things all seem to have changed this year. There's one find in particular which has changed our opinion, and that is nails. We found an absolute abundance of nails on site while excavating. We're focusing in on an area of slumping on the northwest of the mound. And the amount of nails that we've come across there suggests that at one point there was a timber structure on the mound itself, maybe a palisade or another defensive feature, which brings us right back into the castle theory. So you can see that's just some of the nails that we found on site this year. There's been so many, um, but they've just been coming out all day, every day. It's fantastic to see really great evidence. I did mention um, that our main focus uh, this year lies in an area of slumping. 
um, and which is very important in itself. So not only have we answered the sort of what, why and when of the mound, but we think we might have also uncovered what happens next too. It looks like at some point the structure was pushed over the side of the mound a few hundred years after its construction. Uh, but why would they do that? Um, evidence we found seems to date the landscaping, this pushing event, uh, to around the time that the hall was constructed. So in that Tudor post-medieval period, so things like pottery have told us that. And the landscape use at this time would have changed with the construction of the hall as well. So they've clearly decided to get rid of that building there. And I think it's fascinating to think that not only have we found the story of the mound's beginnings, but we found its end too, which quite honestly is an archaeologist's dream. But not only do we have this, because there's so much more that we've learned. So remember the nails that I mentioned previously? Well, we had found an iron working area on site, a metal working area, which indicates that they were smelting iron on site and turning it into the tools and those nails that they needed to, to construct this structure on the mound. But the mysterious thing is there's no iron ore in the local area, which creates a nice little question for us to ponder. So it looks like they were processing their own ore on site based on what our archaeometallurgist expert has seen. He's come to visit, he's had a look and he's given us his opinions. But to do this, he says that they must have been importing this ore from elsewhere. So the question really is, why did they choose to do that, to import that ore instead of buying uh, the pre-smelted iron? Was it a more reliable thing to bring it in? Uh, was it safer to transport that iron in its less valuable form? That's one thing that we've really been pondering this week. So if anyone does have any theories, please feel free to drop them in the chat and share them with us. Uh, we'd really love to hear from you. But overall, this is to say that this site has been an incredible journey. Our work here has led to such a huge difference in our understanding of this monument. We've gone from knowing literally nothing to knowing what we think is the full story of this iconic landmark. And it's all thanks to our amazing crowdfunders in the field and online who have made it possible and who have joined us every step of the way. So really, we can't say thank you enough um, for helping us do this and for helping us to answer those questions uh, that were keeping us up at night. But without further ado, I think everyone is probably itching to see some of the action on site, see some of that archaeology. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and we're going to head over and meet Freddie and see these wonderful finds live in person for ourselves. So hopefully you should all be able to see Freddie now. Hello there. Yes, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, the wind has just picked up a bit in the last few minutes, um, but I thought uh, we'd start here because you can see behind me the current Sultan Hall. So I think that this is the later Sultan Hall that was built in the mid 1500s. But I thought we'd start here because if you look in front of me, we've got our first trench and we've dug this trench here today, uh, th this year, because we thought we've looked at the mound and we've got, we know a bit about that, but you know, what about the surrounding area? And so we put this trench in here to kind of explore the later periods uh, and kind of put it, the whole site into context. So the main idea of this trench here, as you can see, it's quite a big trench, is to look for the avenue that we think used to be here that led up to the house. So if you see, we've got this kind of, nice bit of strip down here where the grass has been cut thinner for us and it comes all the way down here to this trench and so what we're looking for here is multiple phases that we know uh, were here at one time so in this part we can see our venture is working away Sheila and Chris are doing a, an excellent job what are you guys excavating here A tree bowl, yeah, okay. So this, we think, might be where our avenue of elms used to be. So if you look down this way, this big tree, kind of in line with that tree, all the way down here, we are looking at a row of trees, an avenue of trees behind. You can see here, 
this is an excavated tree bowl that we've done already. We did this yesterday and uh, Steph's just finishing recording that behind me. And then we found, we did a bit of a clean back this morning. And now this afternoon, we've revealed this larger tree bowl that uh, we're now excavating. So that's one kind of later period of this avenue. An earlier one is what we're looking at here. So this kind of higher raised bit, we think, might be the trackway, the old trackway that used to lead to Sultan Hall. Uh, and we're looking, we're going a bit further down here to see kind of what the stratigraphy is, what is the, the sequence of events that, that led to that trackway being put in. Mary's doing an excellent job. Look at all the finds that Mary's been finding. I got a full tray. Oh, you love to see that. Brilliant. What's, ooh, look at that. An ancient ring pull. Love that. <laughs> yeah, it's a buckle. I'm jesting. So there's a really nice buckle there. Try and get that. A nice buckle. And then we have over here, we have what we think, uh, we have uh, maps that show that there was a rabbit warren here, but this is not a natural rabbit warren. We think this is man-made where they were putting this in so that it could have uh, uh, some rabbits to, to hunt for food. So that's what we're looking at here. When we first kind of took the, the top layer of the, the turf off, we kind of had all this, this higgledy-piggledy uh, lines in the ground, which uh, we think was that warren. So that's really cool. So yeah, so this is kind of what the, the main idea of this Trench 16 is, uh, is looking at the wider context of Sultan Hall, uh, the periods after the, the castle on the mound, uh, and really looking at what happened afterwards. Um, so this is still a scheduled um, monument area. Uh, so uh, it's still very important, which is why we thought we'd put the trench in here. So if I uh, get you to look at my face again, we're gonna now walk over to the mound trench, uh, which is, you know, the, the castle, you know, really, really exciting bit. But, you know, as archeologists, we love to kind of get the whole understanding of our kind of, area you know we want to know what the exact story of the whole area we don't want to just hear about one specific bit we want to know about all of it uh, we also have been running a finds room alongside of our um, digs and we've been doing flotation as well which is where we have all of our samples of dirt and we put them through a nice tank of water sorry i'm gonna to have to cross the road now so forgive me uh, I'll try not to uh, die. Excellent. We've made it over. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so we put it through a tank and hopefully you can find artifacts we might have missed. Maybe it's a charcoal as well that can help with dating. So we've been doing that so that you can get the, the people who come here can get the whole experience of archaeology, not just the digging. So if you look in front of me now, we have da da da. It's the mound. So it's very hot here. <laughs> it's very sunny today. I put my sun cream on, absolutely necessary. So yes, yeah, so you can see in front of me, we have the mound and then we've got the moat that's been, cut, the grass has been cut down in the moat for us to see it uh, a little clearer, but the moat would have been much deeper. We know this from previous years excavations. Uh, maybe at least, at least a meter, possibly more in some places, and it would be in two to three meters wide, so quite a significant moat. And the mound would have been also higher, as uh, Ginny talks about the scalping. Uh, so that's kind of an area we're looking at as well this year, is we're going to look at kind of why they scalped this and, and if they scalped this before that they filled in the moat. So yes, we can walk around. And if you look here, this is where we do a glacier. So this is this this dirt area is where the moat bridge was. So that's what we're walking over now. Yeah, and as we turn around this corner, you should be able to see in a few seconds our 
trench 14 or our moat trench as I like to call it. Ta -da! And here we are. So it's quite quite a funny looking trench because we put it on the side of a moat on the side of the mound, sorry. And the reason we did this, as I said before, we want to see whether this more shallower bit where we think that they pushed all of the stuff on the mound, the, the ruins of the castle that was there, and also the top of the mound, they pushed this all down. We want to work out whether that happened before they filled in the moat, which is what we're looking at. Just, you can see the slight change in soil just along there, changing color. So, when we started this trench, what we had was um, a lot of rubble towards the top. Um, and we think that that might have been kind of the, either the foundations or kind of the rubble that they used to, to build the, mo uh, the mound. Uh, and we also found quite a lot of nails, as Ginny has said, a lot of nails, uh, which is why we think that this is now a, a timber castle. Uh, and so we we did a, a nice trial back at the start, but now we're kind of doing the, all of the heavy lifting. We're getting really far down uh, in depth, as you can see here, as I, I'll get closer. So you can see we're, we're really far down uh, and we're, we're going to go even further down so we can, we know for sure uh, kind of how this scalping happened, uh, why it happened and when it happened. And if I turn my camera now, you can see a lovely Harriet. And so Harriet, can you show us some of the nails you might have found? So I've opened these bags just to let them breathe because it is quite a hot day here. Um, so what we don't want is the moisture making these any more rusty than they already are. Um, but as you can see, we've got dozens and dozens and dozens of these lovely iron nails, all different shapes and sizes, from tiny, tiny little tacks, uh, like this one, just sort of the size of the end of my pinky finger, all that. the way through to much bigger, much chunkier nails like this one. So that's giving us a clue that predominantly this, uh, this castle or this, um, this medieval moated manor perhaps is predominantly made out of timber. Um, otherwise you probably wouldn't need this quantity of nails. Awesome. Look at this one. Yeah, that's a big nail. <laughs> now it have held some substantial piece of wood. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome, excellent. And we have also been finding um, not just nails, we found uh, some nice pieces of green glazed pottery. We also found um, a kind of carved stone that we're, we're still not quite sure what that was. Uh, that's a bit of a mystery yet to be uncovered. Um, so we have been getting a lot of good finds from this trench. Uh, yeah, so these are the kind of the two trenches that we've been looking at this year. You can see how this the mound here is a lot shallower and that's why we think the scalping was this side it came down here and all of the the rubble we found was along this area here so that does make sense with uh, pushing the the remnants of of the castle that used to be here down after they've you know after it wasn't used anymore and they wanted to use the the top of the mound for something else so yeah so that is a uh, that's Sultan Hall. Um, so that is our, our excavations here. Uh, yeah, I think it's any questions now. I think it's time for questions. Absolutely, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Do you feel free to pop them in the chat? We have had a couple come through while we've been talking, so I'll just go through some of those. 
Um, to start, Brian has said, last year I sectioned and recorded three suspected post holes in the trench on top of the mound. Was anyone able to confirm that there are post holes on the top of the mound? I did see your post yesterday on Facebook, Brian, and I chased this answer up for you with Nat, who is our site director from last year. So Nat says, if they are post holes, they're probably the very base of the post hole. And he concluded that they probably are. And you can find a bit more of his thinking in our report. I'll post a link for you in the chat just now. Um, our report from last year. So you can read up and have a look and see what he said exactly about those post holes that you helped record. Um, so hopefully that will help you. I'll pop it on Facebook as well. So you've got it in two places. Um, another question we have. Oh, this is quite an interesting one. I think you guys will be able to weigh on this from Laura. Laura has asked, is it possible that the builders of the new Sultan Hall remodeled an earlier or even ancient earthwork to make a folly hunting lodge or similar to serve the leisure purposes of the manor house, perhaps filling the moat with rubbish and construction leftovers, maybe even including a tired, mysterious parallel cut stone? This was her wild speculation, she's called it. What do you guys think? Um, I don't think that's wild at all, Laura. I think that's um, probably the best explanation that we have for um, for this site. So um, we we have the, the pottery that has been coming out is from a very, very wide date range, um, which sort of tracks because if we've had um, a settlement on top of here, uh, probably from about the Norman period all the way through, um, roughly up until the house over the road was built, um, then that's that's what we see with the, the pottery assemblage. It's we've got pottery from that whole period through, um, and it's all been found within the rubble and the nails, that layer of uh, deconstruction of the mound. Um, and I think uh, the scalping of the mound, um, sort of pushing off that top of the mound, using that earth um, and uh, in the process of demolishing the remainder of any building that was up there. I think that has possibly even been to deliberately create a more gentle slope on this side um, because entertaining your guests would have been very, very important in the Tudor period. Um, it was becoming very, very popular to have very uh, formal gardens. So you would have um, uh, very beautifully planted uh, garden shrubs, things like that, where you would take leisurely walks through with anyone visiting the house, um, entertaining all of your guests. Um, so yes, I think that is probably the best explanation of um, how the, the mound came to be reused in that Tudor period. Absolutely, and I think anyone who's familiar with our dig at Sudley Castle as well will have seen our mound from last year too, so it's definitely a, a common feature for viewing platforms. Um, I have another one from Brian, which I think, Harriet, do you want to weigh in on this one? Brian's asked, will we be digging here again? Yeah, um, well, I think it's very safe to say that we have answered our questions now about the mound. Um, so I think it would be very, very unlikely that we would come back to um, dig in the scheduled area again. Um, that said, Sultan is quite a vast property and we know that the landowner has other questions about other features um, on the property. So I don't think we can rule out completely coming back to Sultan ever again, but um, it would be a very different research topic if we did come back. Fantastic, thank you. Um, we haven't got any more questions. Oh wait, one might have just come through. Uh, yeah, we've got one from Joe, but first I'm just going to pop to Kim, put a interesting comment in the chat that I think is quite a good one to raise. Kim has said a wooden castle. She's always thought of castles as being made of stone. Um, we did have a talk with the Queen of Lost Castles a few months ago now, and we did discuss these different types of castles, but do any of you guys want to weigh in on the stone versus wooden castle idea? Yeah, 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 no, I could do both. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so particularly in earlier periods, uh, you don't find as many stone castles, um, mainly because, um, you know, the technology wasn't as great. And also, if you owned land, um, not everywhere would have had stone, uh, but most places where you would have had lots of forests. And so your, your timber supply would be far greater than your stone supply. Uh, and if you wanted to build a castle uh, quicker, uh, rather quickly, then wood is your friend there. It, it takes a long time, it takes years and years and years to build stone castles. 
Uh, whereas a castle this size, um, the majority of the time would have been spent building the mound rather than the castle. Um, and so they would have built that defensive structure first and then they could build that, that timber structure afterwards. Fantastic, yeah, thank you very much. We've got a few more questions coming in now. So we've got one from Joe who's asked, is there any evidence in the structure of Sultan Hall, so the hall itself, to suggest any reuse of material from the mound structure or any earlier structures? So the Sultan Hall that you can see now um, has been, uh, it's, it, was, it, it was built in roughly the same position uh, when they originally vacated this side of the road um, but it was it, the building now is from a little slightly later, um, not by much, but not quite the original property that we think um, was would have been there. Um, so what we have seen though is um, you, reuse of uh, some stone that we know is used uh, in the construction of a retaining wall around the mound. So um, a couple of years ago, when we did uh, a big, big trench close to the road, um, we got down through the moat deposits and found uh, a, a sandstone wall, these really huge, chunky blocks of sandstone that we think were um, basically retaining the clay, helping to stabilise the mound so that it didn't just all slip back down into the moat. Um, and there are smaller properties on Sultan, uh, the Sultan estate that may have reused some of that stone. Um, so there are several cottages and things like that. Um, so not part of the main house, but possibly some of those older, um, smaller um, houses, cottages, buildings on the site. Fantastic, yeah. Um, we have a few other questions from Lawrence now. Um, Lawrence has said, hi all, great to see what you're achieving. Thank you so much. Uh, he said, thinking broader, is there any evidence that this mound might be part of a series of fortified mounds in the area? Do we have any sort of sites around, contemporary sites that link up? Yeah, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of um, uh, uh, castles, fortified um, structures around. So this area, um, it was all uh, wrapped up in the Welsh border disputes um, in this sort of early, uh, uh, well, later medieval period, sorry. Um, so yes, so there are lots and lots of quite similar sites around. Just down the road in Wem, um, there's a, uh, a mound called Castle Hill or Castle Mound, I think, I can't remember quite what the exact name is. Um, and that is just a, perhaps a what, mile, two miles down the yeah, road, something really like that. that. Very, very close. There are lots and lots and lots of them in this area, these small, fortified places um, where you might have had a family or a couple of families living. Fantastic, yeah. And speaking of that road, actually, Lawrence has also asked, is there any evidence of approach roads to and from the mound? Freddie, you did cross a road earlier. Um, how does that road link up with our site? Yeah, so we actually think that um, the, where uh, I crossed where that moat, the moat bridge was, uh, that actually goes faces towards the road. So we think that this would have probably controlled the road uh, that that kind of came down in this. That's kind of the purpose for this castle here uh, would have had that kind of almost a toll on the, you know, they decide who gets to pass and who doesn't get to pass from the road. Yeah, the road positioning might have changed very slightly over the years mm. um, but uh, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that actually that road has been there for a, a, an extraordinarily long period of time possibly even as far back as the roman period fantastic yeah no that's really well placed right next to that road there um i think we had an Another one from Carol. Oh, no, Carol's just said she spent much of Tuesday on site cleaning tiny nails and she wishes <laughs> good luck to everyone who has to clean the next batch. Yeah, <laughs> they were very well cleaned, I might add. Yeah. Um, Caroline has asked, has anyone seen a standard building plan for these castles? I think that's a tricky one. Is there a standard, standard building plan for a castle? No, I mean, certainly in later periods, uh, castles can have similar layouts um, to others in the area but I think you're really um, when you're building a, a castle you really have to be informed by uh, a its purpose 
um, B, the area, uh, the, the site that you're actually building on. So you kind of, you would always adapt what you build uh, to best fit the purpose and the landscape that you're working within. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's just been a little response in the chat that tickled me there. <laughs> the Fines team have thanked Carol and they said they're currently cleaning more tiny nails as we <laughs> speak. <laughs> Excellent. It's fantastic. But yes, no, you're right. Yeah, every castle is slightly different. And if you're interested in different sort of forms and styles of castles, we do have um, our talk with the Queen of the Lost Castles that I mentioned, which is up on our YouTube, I believe, open for everyone to have a look at. Really interesting talk. We talk about Sultan in that talk. And she also discusses what is a castle, what makes a castle, how are they all different? Um, so if this uh, sort of got you thinking about castles, I definitely recommend giving that a watch. She had some amazing knowledge to share. Um, but I think we've run out of questions, but I do have one for you two. And that is, when does the dig wrap up? When do we finish? Yeah, so we actually finish on Sunday. Uh, so not not many days left now. Um, got a bit of a bit more digging to do, a bit more recording, but yeah, um, not long. It, it feels like it's, we've been here for ages. I don't want to leave. <laughs> I think you found so much this year. It's been really great sort of being on the other side and hearing everything come out. Um, and I hope everyone, all our crowd funders have enjoyed it as well. I know I had a bit of a nerdy moment the other day when I was hearing about all the new discoveries and the new theories. It was really interesting to see how it all ties up together. So well done to everyone who's been out there on site digging and getting us all these answers as well. So I think if nobody else has any questions, um, we might wrap up a little early. If you do, feel free to drop them in the chat now. But in the meantime, what I'll do is I will share my screen very quickly. Um, I'll just take you guys off for a second and I'll do a bit of a wrap up for us all. Uh, here we go. So, should hopefully be able to see that all now. So don't forget to keep your eye on the timeline. Anything that happens over the next few days um, will go on that timeline there. And of course, you can check out our website. Um, I shared the link for the reports earlier, so you can have a look at those. Um, you can follow us on social media to see any sort of new updates. We have archaeology guessing games. That's where we pop all our new events up on there. Anything at all, any updates, you can see them all on there. And if you fancy joining us on a dig this year, you can head to our calendar page. We still have a few places open on some of our other digs. Um, but if you can't make it this year, was always next year as well. So do keep an eye out. Do join our mailing list if you like. Um, we have had a couple of last minute questions come through, um, but for anyone who's watching the recording, um, feel free to check out all of those as well. Um, and anyone who's missed anything, we will be sending out the recording in a few hours once that's processed for you all to catch up. Um, but I'll stop sharing my screen again and we'll dive back into those last couple of questions. I don't want to miss anyone's questions. We've still got plenty of time. Um, before we say goodbye. So I'll call back up Freddie and Harriet again. Um, so one of our questions is, this is a good one for you, Freddie. What would be your dream find in the last final few days? What would be your favorite thing? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, I think I would love to find uh, help the state, uh, kind of our site, kind of levels that we're at there. If we find, it'd be It'd be perfect if we find one coin in the moat and one coin on the mound that are different things that can really help us tell us, you know, which Yeah, absolutely. That'll be, that'll be perfect. That'll make our jobs a little easier. Yeah, so for anyone who isn't uh, familiar with coins and archaeology, so coins are like the perfect way to date anything in archaeology. Uh, it's fantastic, if you, especially if you find them in the bottom of a feature and they've got that date stamped right on them gives you a definite answer of when that was made. So a coin would be fantastic. That's a good choice, Freddie. Um, we also have a question from Rose. Maybe you could pop and get some uh, green glazed pottery. She would like to see some. Do you have any on site around that we can show? I'm not sure if we have any uh, here. They were found pretty uh, pretty early on. I'll have a look in the, the trays for us. Um, you can um, also, we do have some on our timeline that you can have a look at yeah. if we can't find any on site. There's plenty up there. I don't think we have any at the moment. 
being cleaned in the fines room right now, being, I think. It's all being cleaned, yeah. So <laughs> we're coming towards the end. We need to make sure that everything's been cleaned. Um, so we're, we're, we're kind of being very on top of that, being prepared archaeologists. That's very good. That's what we need. So yeah, Rose, have a look on the timeline, see if you can spot any. Um, and if you'd like to see some, just let us know and we can send over some photos and things as well if you want to see it all cleaned up too. Um, Elaine has asked, what do we know about the people who called the mound home? I don't think we know very much, do we, Freddie? Yeah, it's very hard to tell. Um, you know, they could have been used for several things. They could have been, you know, they could have been like a, a barracks for, for a small commander uh, and, and his troops. So they could have also just been a, a place for a very wealthy family or, or two families. And they would have lived in this, it would have been about 12 by 12 meters uh, building with multiple stories. So it doesn't sound too big, but, you know, back in that period is actually quite a, quite a substantial structure. So um, we, we, it's very hard to actually know who lived here without the castle still kind of remaining here. Um, um, or at least, and, but we know that it was destroyed uh, later on. So that's very hard for us to say about this castle. Um, maybe other castles, we, we can have a better idea if, if it survives more. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Cassie has asked, what has been the best find so far? I think for me, it has to be the nails. What about you, Freddie? The nails are good. I'm, I'm really curious about this carved stone. It's got basically four or five grooves carved through it. It's quite substantial. It's bigger than my head. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of curious to see what, what this is uh, um, and kind of find out what, what, what it's used for. Absolutely, yeah. So if anyone hasn't seen that, that is up on our timeline and on our social media. A mysterious piece of carved stone that uh, Claudia uncovered. Um, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, but do you go have a look. If we have any stone experts in the chat, please do definitely go have a look. Um, we're still pondering on that one. Yeah, that's a really good choice. And I think that is all of our questions. We are wrapping up. So just another reminder again, uh, don't forget to check out our timeline, our website, our social media if you want to find out more. Um, like I mentioned, I definitely recommend having a look at our YouTube and watching the Lost Castles talk if you're interested in castles and Sultan Hall. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for coming, especially thank you if you're a crowd funder who you've come and you've made this whole thing possible. So thank you again. Um, and good luck and goodbye to everyone on site. Thank you to Freddie for joining us. And thank you again. Yeah, I hope you all have a lovely Friday afternoon and a lovely weekend. And we'll see you all very soon, I'm sure, for our next dig. So do keep an eye out for more online tours and talks as well. So thank you so much, everyone. And goodbye from us. <laughs>